Hey everyone, my name is Rooster and welcome back to Mechabellum and welcome to my positioning guide. Um, this has been a while in the making, but I think that I finally have enough experience and enough ideas that I want to share with you guys um, to help you improve. So maybe you just got the game and you're wondering, I, I have no idea where to put all of these different units what are the key ideas? Or maybe you've been playing for a while and you're trying to get to that next step and you think that your positioning might be holding you back, um, then, then this is for you. Now, as a disclaimer, this is by no means the, the be all and end all of positioning, right? These are my personal takes. This is what I like. Um, some of this is kind of universal, especially among high MMR players, but you know, you might have a thing here or there that you do differently and that works very well for you. As long as it works, then, you know, then that's fine. There's also other players that do things a bit differently. Um, you might pick something up from them and use it instead of, of what I'm recommending. But overall, I think this is a solid guide and I have had a lot of success with it. I think it at least should give you the, the correct ideas, it should teach you the correct way of thinking about why you put units where you put them. I'll be going through this guide talking about games where you and your opponents are playing standard, games where you are defending against an aggressive opponent, and games where you are deciding to be the aggressor into an opponent that is defending, because these do have a couple differences here and there. So, um... All oh, right. One final thing: the things I'll be talking about is um, stuff like function and role. So, what exactly is your unit supposed to do, and why do you put them on, or where do you put them on the board to make them fulfill that role? Um, I'll be talking about chaff waves because these are very important, and then I'll also be talking about stuff like funneling and pulling units. Um, these key terms should help you understand uh, what it is that I'm trying to achieve when I put my put the unit somewhere. So without further ado, there's a lot of stuff to go through. I'll we'll be in the testing tool first, where I'll be explaining some stuff, and then I'll show you guys some, um, some rounds from games that I played at high MMR to kind of talk you through a, a real game and, and show you like what, what was going on that game and how I applied the concepts that I will be explaining first. Starting with um, playing standard. And right off the bat, I am going to be talking about your chaff positions right from the get-go. So in this board, I've set up a, a pretty like standard setup for two potential boards of, uh, of standard gameplay. So both of you playing around the towers, playing far back, not necessarily pushing towards the tower, um, symmetrical lineups. And I have set up the boards in two different ways. Um, and I want you to look at the differences, right? So right off the bat, I have crawlers and I have fangs as my chaff, right? What is their purpose? Their purpose is to distract the enemy units, the enemy sledges, the enemy marksmen from hitting my sledges, my phoenix, my arc lights, because these are my important units. So what I want them to do, right, is I want them to arrive at a time when my units are able to also start and engage. And that is the first thing that you'll see here. I have one side where you have a crawler on the side and one side where I have a crawler in the front because this is something that I have seen people do when they start out the game is they put the chaff in front of their units in these situations. The problem that you will have here is that these crawlers, they have 16 meters a second move speed. They're significantly faster than your other units like your sledges and your arc light, which only have seven, right? So what will happen is that these crawlers will run into the enemy team. They'll be killed by the opponent's units even before your units are, are able to start shooting at your opponent's units. So this chaff back does absolutely nothing. Um, and so this is important to note when you have different movement speeds of units, where exactly you put them. Um, another thing, uh, so... This is basically why we, we put the, the crawlers behind the towers, right? Because they're so fast that if you put them here, they will still be able to get in front of your units before your opponent's units in this situation start engaging your tanks and your, your arc light. Now, when it comes to positioning behind the towers, there's also some things that you need to note. I have one side where I put my crawlers vertical. I have one side where I put my crawlers horizontal. 
What's the big difference? In both of these situations, the crawlers will split behind the tower, um, and they should do a good job at um, at distracting your opponent's units. However, um, in this situation, we are getting flanked, right? And this can happen, especially in aggro games, but it could happen in um, later rounds in standard games as well. And if I position this way, then this entire pack of chaff will get pulled, right? I could also position this fang like so, but that's even, that's, you know, this also will get pulled. Um, whereas if I position this way, sorry, um, the crawlers on this side of the tower will at least go forwards. Yes, some of these will still get pulled, but at least you will have some chaff to distract the initial engage. And this is kind of important because it might um, stop you from losing a bunch of tempo in a, in a particular round. Um, this is also, by the way, why I would often recommend people put crawlers in the back here. Um, having crawlers in the corner like, like so, you can put them here. You can also put them all the way in the corner. It's kind of up to preference. Um, these will defend against pretty much any initial flank. Because of the spawn in time and the crawler DPS, they will often kill most things that are here. If you don't have anything there, however, like on this side, then this will simply get pulled and the, the arc light will spawn in and start shooting at all of your, your chaff. What else? We also have some... Um, the phoenix positioning here, which is different. This phoenix in the back... Um, it, this again has to do with your movement speed, right? So phoenixes, unlike marksmen, are also really fast. 60 meters a second, same movement speed as crawlers. You want them, therefore, to be a little bit further back because they're going to travel quite quickly. So if you put them like here, as you will see, uh, the phoenixes will overtake the sledges and then they will stop at a certain, well, once they can start shooting units, but that might mean that they actually get locked on by the marksman before stuff like your sledges or even your, your chaff arrives. So you'd rather have them somewhere in the back because they'll spend the initial, all your units will be spending the initial first seconds of the, the game, of the round, moving forward. And so with fast units, you usually want them to be slightly further back. Then there's one final thing that I want you to note, and that is um, chaff waves. So with chaff waves, what I mean by that is that you want to have during the round um, different packs of chaff slowly coming in to basically replenish your amount of, of small units that are distracting the opponents, right? You can't just rely on your one pack to distract. Uh, you want to have multiple ones coming in. So that's usually why you have a crawler behind the tower. A crawler that comes a bit later, that's a bit further back in the corner here. You will also often see crawlers put all the way in the center here to split both sides. Um, you will see fangs put behind the crawlers because fangs are very slow. And so they will arrive after the two packs of crawlers have gone in and died. And basically they will be the, the second stage of the round, um, and they will still be there to, to distract the opponent. So this is really important when you play your games, is not to have all your chaff on one line, usually speaking, right? Usually. I think that that's about all that I want to say for now. Um, you can see also, like, there's, there's general areas where you want to position your units. So, like, your units that are about, like, seven meters a second, if you're playing standard, they will be up and around the towers, sometimes a little bit forward. Um, your marksmen, they have a lot of range. They will be slightly behind, like so, like around tower height, maybe one or two squares behind. Um, phoenixes will be a bit further back, usually like around six or even seven squares behind the tower, I would say. Stuff like, and then everything that falls into those categories will be around the same height in standard. So stuff like Vulcan, slow units will be in front of the tower. Um, stuff like melters, long range, single target DPS, they will often be like here behind your sledges. Um, and, and anything that would fall within that category, you can pretty much like substitute, right? Um, things like scorpions, same thing around the tower height. Um, 
only really fast units or units that you want to arrive late will be all the way in the back. So let's quickly have this uh, round play out so you can kind of see what happens. So here you can see like the whole packet shaft goes towards the flank. But over here you can see some crawlers are going forward. Um, over here, the crawlers are all dead. And only now do your units start shooting, right? Um, phoenixes are also right on top of your sledges here, which is not good. Whereas here... And you can see that they're getting engaged, right? One sniper already dead, or one phoenix. Even though your phoenix on this side are actually slightly behind your sledges. And that all has to do with the positioning. Now, obviously, these two sides were not even. But you can see the massive difference that it makes, right? Left side is pushing in hard. Whereas right side was actually winning. Um, and that's the like that's a massive difference, right? That's an absolutely huge difference. None of the sledges died on this side, but on this side, all of the sledges were about to die. It's only because we got debuffed on, on this side that um, um, they would win the round. And and mind you, they actually have two more units than uh, this side does. But the, the sides are equal in terms of what units we have. It's just simply that the positioning in this particular situation is allowing us to to, well, basically not get all of our chaff pulled in case that happens. Um, and also we're utilizing the speed of our units um, to position them correctly. We're using the chaff waves correctly. We're positioning here in the corners to be able to counter this type of flank if it spawns in. And yeah, we're also not like throwing away one of our deployments by putting it all the way in front where it dies before any engage happens, right? So that is the first thing that I wanted to note. Let's go through a couple more standard things that I might want to show you guys. Um, and then we'll head on to defending and playing aggressively. All right, so here's one of the examples that I wanted to show, which involves your opponent having storm callers. Um, I have put them in the middle of the, the board here. And... On the one hand, we have a setup where all of the chaff is in one line. And on the other side, we see a similar setup, but the fangs in front are um, offset. Now, the reason I would usually recommend something like this, if you want to put fangs in front, is because these fangs give a lovely target for the storm crawlers to shoot at. And because the crawlers are faster than the fangs, they'll be passing through these fangs and they will actually catch some of the stray missiles of the storm crawlers. Whereas here, that's not a, going to happen. I'm quickly going to demonstrate so you can have a a look at, at what I mean. So Stormcaller is here. They will get a quick lock on. And you can see they hit some of the crawlers. Whereas here, the crawlers get to walk in um, without being harmed. So that is that is one thing. And then a second one is the way that we usually like to distract these type of, of plays is um, by using a, a distraction crawler. So how that works is we use one of these. And we put them like so. And use a mobile beacon to run these crawlers up and down. Now why, we, why this is done is... Um, to distract these storms, right? They're going to try and lock onto these crawlers as they run past, and they're going to miss their initial one or even two volleys, um, which which buys you some time. Now, when you do this, put your crawlers vertical. Don't put them horizontal, because if you do this, then your opponent can missile the whole pack um, and get rid of those crawlers. Whereas if you do this, if your opponent tries to missile, then... The, the last three crawlers will survive. So this is rather important. And you can see now how this, this round will go from the start. Storms will lock on. Crawlers will start running in. Some of these storms will also start turning. And you can see the initial volleys here are starting to miss. And on this side, we have the added benefit of having those fangs on the outside. The crawlers are coming in and providing more distraction. Um, and that is just generally uh, a way of, of dealing with storm callers. Now, when it comes to storm caller positioning, there is 
basically two two ways of going about it if you only have the two starting ones you can either put them on the inside like so but you can also decide to put them on the outside um like so now putting them on the inside is usually a little bit safer um and it allows you to to coordinate your your units a bit better here you're really playing on the outside the, of your turrets and it's very hard to have uh, your units on the on the sides help the other side if required. But it does prevent you from getting distracted by a single pack. Your opponent will have to put crawlers over here or there. Or alternatively, this positioning opens you up by, um, for being flanked by by chaff, things like crawlers, um, to, to distract your initial packs of, of storms. Um, yeah, th this is kind of up to preference. I kind of like putting them outside. Some people also like to put them, for instance, like so. Put them vertically. Can also be vertical on the inside of your tower if you prefer. This has no real benefit. Uh, it, it does stagger your units, right? Because obviously the front storm collar is closer to units than the back ones. So they will usually start shooting at different intervals or different timings. Um, and not all shoot at the same unit. Um, and it can also help you position your units sometimes. In certain scenarios, this might provide you some more space over here. Whereas if you do this, uh, it's a bit hard to put any units like over here, right? Because this whole line is is taken up by the storms. Um, I think that's about it. I hope I didn't miss anything. I'm trying to think of stuff. All right. It looks like I didn't miss anything for the standard games. So let's move on to the second type of games that you may have, which is our games where you are defending and your opponent is attacking. Right off the bat, what's going to be important here is the concept of funneling, which is where you are pulling the enemy units towards a, a certain pack of, say, chaff, so that it becomes easier for your damage dealers to deal with them because you're grouping all the enemy units rather than having them be all over the place. Now, the way that you can do this is that there is this rule where if you put a pack of units five squares in front of your tower and two squares to the inside, then it will pull all of the furthest away units that your opponent may have. So that means that the furthest away crawlers here, the crawlers all the way in the corner will always get pulled towards this pack of fangs as long as it's here. Of course, this also works, and it works even better if you put them more on the inside, which is usually what I would recommend. Um, you can play something like this, for instance. Um, the reason that I prefer doing this is that uh, it's, it's a little bit safer. Look, your opponent, well, yes, you will pull your opponent's units on the first couple rounds, maybe. They can work around this by buying a mobile beacon and obviously if you position your units more on the inside of your tower your outsides become more vulnerable to mobile beacons um i feel like this makes it a little bit easier to coordinate units that are on the front here and units that will eventually have to be somewhere over here to defend the flanks but it works with a uh, this a uh, fang that is over here right two squares to the inside five squares to the front now, we can basically just run a run the round here so that you guys see what, what it looks like. And you will see all the crawlers here go towards the fangs, and it just makes it so much easier for all of your units to coordinate and get rid of those steel balls. Um, this can also set up for a nice missile if you position it a bit further backwards. Um, to try and deal with all the steel balls. Obviously, in this situation, um, your opponent is playing asymmetrically. The left, your units on the left are going to be, well, basically struggling a lot. But this will set you up at least for some success on the right side. Yes, you will probably lose the first round in these situations, but that's just kind of the nature of, uh, of these type of, of asymmetrical pushes. At least here, you're giving yourself a decent chance at, uh, at success. Now, in defenses, especially against stuff like steel balls, um, putting sledgehammers 
vertical is really important because it means that the, the steel balls can't just lock on to different sledgehammers each and kill the whole pack quickly. They will all basically go onto the first one, kill it, go onto the second one, kill it. And because of the way that their damage ramps up whenever they lock on, um, it takes a whole lot longer to deal with the with the, the pack of sledges. Positioning vertically has another advantage where it, again, it staggers the shots the same way that it would do with the, the storm collars. Um, and it just makes it a little bit better to, to clear chaff, or at least it helps sledgehammers clear chaff a little bit better. Um, so yeah, that's important. Now, when you're defending, you basically want to go for these type of setups. Uh, you might try and go here for something like an early Vulcan. To help you out, you might use a missile, for instance, if you think you can get some good value and kill like one, one and a half packs of steel balls to uh, to at least regain some tempo, get some of that EXP, gain some time to basically solidify your defense. If your opponent is really pushing hard on one side, you could just immediately sell stuff. If you have sledges, they're really slow, so they're not going to make it to the tower quickly. You might as well sell them and immediately invest into solidifying uh, the right side of the board. And yeah, I mean, when you're playing against aggro, is there anything else? Of course, you will have to, to take note of the fact that if you position this way, your outsides are a bit vulnerable. You can also play on the outsides of your turrets if you like, but then your inside is a little bit more vulnerable. A lot of this will have to come down with slowing down the enemy. So the way that you do this is usually by um, having some fangs in front. They are slow units. They are ranged units. So they will hold their position a lot better than crawlers will. And yeah, you always will have the ability to shield them potentially if your opponent is not using stuff like um, a wraith or a, a mustangs. Um, slowing the opponent down is the most important thing here. So stuff like like sledges, like fangs are are really good tools to to deal with that. Obviously, you also have stuff stuff available like oil, um, and you can try to go for for flanks if if need be. Um, one other thing, of course, is getting pulled. So again, this is a reason why I would recommend you to. If you have crawlers to put them like this, because at least if you're getting pushed, uh, as you saw at the beginning of this video, then your crawlers won't immediately get pulled towards the side. If you think that your opponent might go for an early flank, then again, putting some crawlers over here doesn't hurt. They will always be useful as a late packet chaff um, and they can deal with pretty much most early game flanks while they're spawning in. So. Yeah. I think that's about it. Uh, you, you do want to position more in front of your tower here, obviously, because your opponent is trying to go for your tower. So you can't play really far back and leave your tower open. That is not a, a good thing. So again, you need to put hit points. You need to put units in front of your tower to slow down your opponent. And that leads us to the final situation that you might have, which is playing aggressively. So. That brings us to the final game where you are playing aggressively and your opponent is defending. Um, this is probably the most difficult one to explain because there's a lot of different things that you can do on aggro. Uh, and a lot of them involve trying to counter what the defending player wants to do, right? So trying to counter, for instance, um, the funneling. So spacing your units a little bit so that at least you are hopefully getting them to target different things, uh, at, certainly on round one. So here, for instance, you can see me positioning these phoenixes slightly apart. Um, we're trying to go for this tower, but I might be able to perhaps snipe a um, an arc light if my opponent has one or something along those lines. Um, another thing that's important is positioning against missiles. So trying to make sure that if your opponent does decide to use a missile, you are not uh, he's not getting a lot of value out of it, right? So in these situations, it often means like if he missiles, he only gets one pack of chaff, nothing more. Or maybe he might be able to like hit an arc light, but you know, he gets nothing more. Um, 
So some important things to note there is that if you're defending against missiles, you want to have two squares between the units and the one that you don't want to also get hit. So for instance, like here, it's you have to put the arc lights at least two squares away from the fang, because if you would put it over here, uh, a missile would also kill this arc light with the splash damage. If you put it two squares, it doesn't die. Same thing here. If you put it one square behind the crawlers, it dies. Uh, put it two squares behind the crawlers, it doesn't die. Now, obviously, there's also some speed things involved here. So if you're, the unit that's in front is uh, slower than the unit behind, you might still get hit, so that is kind of important. Usually you'll be using crawlers on the front line, so 60 meters a second. The only thing that's faster is uh, a rhino if you click mech rage, but usually like two squares will do the trick to prevent you from one losing more than one pack of, uh, of your units to a missile, and two, not having the unit that's behind get slowed by the missile because all of that is also something that can really hurt you pushing into the opponent's tower. Um, I usually like to space my units relatively far apart. The reason that I do this rather than going like very, very hard onto one tower is that one, it pulls the enemy units from the outside or the left turret towards the inside. And so if I manage to get in on this side and get the tower, then the enemy units are already closer and I can perhaps engage them while the debuff is still ongoing. If I don't do this and I go all on one side, then the opponent's units might for, first of all take my tower. Um, and second, I might get the debuff, but I might not be able to make use of the debuff because the opponent's units are so far away from, uh, from the tower that I took. Uh, another one is this also prevents funneling to some extent, right? So if you put all of your units very close together, they will all ha have a tendency to go towards the same point. Um, you can remedy this with stuff like uh, a mobile beacon, but you have to be a bit wary. Um, there's a different setup that you could play where you actually play on the outsides. Um, obviously, if you go heavy on one side, then you will have to try and play around the fact that you can always try and switch it up and go for the left tower, which will usually be a bit more undefended since your opponent is trying to stop your main advance. Uh, you can also try and position on the very outskirts um, where you try to uh, abuse the fact that the middle now becomes very open because you're pulling away the enemy units towards the sides. So you can always like create a, a third threat essentially in the middle and then you mobile beacon them to either tower. You can swap, you can swap between rounds and um, yeah, try and uh, outplay your opponent that way. I think the easiest thing for me is to uh, go into a game where I play aggro and show you guys uh, how this plays out because there's so much here to go through that it's it's difficult to explain in um, in a testing grounds. I feel a final thing, of course, is of course you can also make a lot of use of the flanks. Uh, pulling here is especially important. So if you see your opponent putting vertical crawlers behind the tower, you can try and go for a tempo round, pull away the crawlers, leave open the tower because there's no chaff to defend or less chaff to defend, and um, yeah, there's a bunch of trickery involved here. You have to understand like when you can pull stuff. Usually when pulling stuff, uh, as a rule of thumb, anything that's in this quarter of the opponent's map, so the top left or the top right, any unit in there will usually get pulled by anything that you put over here in the, the top half of the, um, of the flank. And, and that can lead you to getting towers, winning rounds, getting EXP leads over your opponents, and basically steamrolling them. So let's go into a first game here. Uh, let's start with me playing aggro, and then we'll basically reverse it uh, into standard game, into de games where I'm defending and games where I am playing standard, and so is my opponent. So here's our first game that I want to highlight, where I am playing aggressively, and I'm actually utilizing... Um, the the outsides 
of the battlefield to try and push in. So this is the, the final example that I gave where you're trying to push from the outsides and then you're leaving yourself a third potential threat in the inside where you can utilize a mobile beacon to, uh, well, abuse the fact that usually your opponent will be trying to defend the outsides more and so the insides are more vulnerable. Um, I'm starting here with steel balls and crawlers and you can see here a particular setup that I use where this is the setup after round one um, where I'm actually putting the steel balls with the crawlers right behind. These units have the same movement speed, uh, both have 16, and doing this on the first round will mean that my opponent who bought arc lights will probably lock onto the steel balls rather than my crawlers if I put them in front, and this means that my crawlers will survive for a bit longer and create mayhem throughout his fangs. Um, I also put my one pack of chaff in the middle here. This is to try and pull away certain units potentially. You can actually see that this arc light here is wants to go towards the middle. Um, and it also sets up for a potential play later on if uh, if I get, for instance, stuff like, like rhinos. Now, my opponent, I can immediately identify, right, um, has put a vertical pack of fangs here. So this can get pulled and anything he would put behind would also be able to get pulled. Same thing here with the phoenixes. Um, they are within this quadrant, pretty much. So I could go for something like a, a fang arc light flank at some point, and it would pull away his chaff and the two phoenixes away from the tower, allowing me to get in a bit more easily. Now let's skip ahead a couple rounds and see how this, this board develops, right? So we are a couple rounds in, and... I now have acquired myself a Wraith for Chaff Clear. That's not the most important thing. Um, I've actually started to swap from one side to the other, right? I see that my, my opponent put some more Phoenixes down. Um, perhaps I noticed that my, my Steel Balls had leveled. Um, and so I want to play for my strong side. I'm starting to sell out over here to try and make these units that he's upgrading, he's giving levels, are um, not as useful. Right, um, and basically leveraging there where I was more successful, um, and and push that advantage. We get a free unit round here, by the way. I see, and we actually do get the rhinos. So this is where I can start to be really annoying, right? This is where I can start to be really annoying. I also do have redeployment, which is something that you can certainly use, especially with this type of play style. Uh, moving around threats, moving around big units to suddenly be able to buy like three units from the tower plus move one of your strong units to the other side and um, yeah, try and, and keep getting those towers attacking the weak side of your opponent. Uh, we can move ahead a bit further still um, as here, for instance, we have round seven. Uh, you can see how the board has developed. And actually, the steel balls that were over here are now over here. Uh, I can use these mobile beacons to push in. I've I've actually have flanked my opponent here at some point, but I sold out of it again. Um, and yeah, here playing aggro is just a lot about uh, keeping your opponent on his toes, trying to create threats that they they don't expect or they're not going to be able to deal with immediately and push your advantage that way by getting EXP um, and just getting damage down so that your opponent uh, only has to lose basically one round and then the game is done, right? Uh, positioning wise, you can see a couple things here. Uh, obviously air units and ground units, those you can put really, you can put them up against one another since missiles can't hit both air and ground at the same time. They either hit air or they hit ground. Um, I'm leaving here enough space so that these steel balls can't directly be targeted by a missile. It will always hit the crawlers. There's enough spacing here where they won't get hit. Um, and yeah, same thing here, right? Uh, in between the rhinos and the crawlers, there's two spaces so that when I beacon them into tower, at least the first missile will go onto the crawlers and not also hit these, uh, these rhinos and slow them down. So this is really important. And also on aggro, you want to have some of these chaff waves, right? I'm protecting my towers here, but I'm also starting to build some crawlers in the back. Um, 
at least to have two different shaft waves and not have everything on on the line because that can get missiled and will get missiled in a lot of games as your opponent has more money to spend. So that is one example that I wanted to give. Now let's show you guys another one. So here's the second game that I have. I'm also starting out with the uh, crawlers and steel balls. However, this time I'm deciding to play on one side rather than playing on the outsides and leaving the middle open. So what you can see here is a really good example of what I mean, right? I have some crawlers here in front, but then I have three sets of crawlers further behind, and it's the same idea, right? Having these different chaff waves and also utilizing the fact that my opponent with his arc lights um, will lock onto my steel balls here relatively early on, and that leaves some room for my crawlers to, to be alive and wreak havoc. Um... This is the, the round one deployments, right? So I'm not expecting to get missiled. So I can get away with this type of positioning because my opponent doesn't know one that I'm, well, probably knows that I'm playing aggro, doesn't know what side I'm on, doesn't know how I'm positioning. So you won't get missiled on the round one and you can actually leave your important units as the front line and then build chaff around them in the unit in the rounds that follow. Also, when the, the line actually goes two squares forward. Um, and yeah, you can see myself spacing relatively wide here as well, so that I have different lock-ons. These guys are going for the tower. These guys are going for the tower, but also more towards the middle. And it is a wide enough positioning to where all of these opponents' units are actually going towards my units rather than towards the tower. Uh, and I can hopefully utilize the, the debuff to my advantage. I can also see here that my opponent, for instance, has put their units really far back and well within this quadrant. So this could be an easy pull away, right? Since they only have two packs of chaff right now, nothing in front of the tower. If I put an arc light here, which is likely what's going to happen here, um, I can pull away this whole pack of chaff and then the tower is really, really vulnerable. And that is exactly what happens. So here we have turn number three. And you can see I put these uh, the arc light in the corner. The crawlers get pulled away because of the way they were positioned, and uh, it leaves me um, and e it gives me an easier time to get in. Right, um, opponent here goes for an interesting positioning, but this can make me use a mobile beacon to go up and around since he did use a lot of resources and deployments on this particular setup. Um, and yeah, using a mobile beacon here really important and also positioning in a way that you can use the mobile beacon and exploit the outsides. Uh, let's go on to a, a later round here and see how the board develops. So here we can see also, right, chaff here. Uh, I'm going on the outsides. Also try and position your units to where they are engaging the, one, the units that you want them to counter, right? So... Here I have a wraith in the middle with some phoenixes behind. The wraith is really good at dealing with chaff, right? So I'm putting it in front of the chaff. Then I'm putting the, the big units, the ones that deal damage, also like positioning them so that they can actually deal with, for instance, this Vulcan or dealing with this fortress. Um, a big flank in this particular game. A lot of resources spent here. Um, the barrier to counter the Vulcan. I mean, this is this is more about unit counters, but I'm trying to basically pull away a lot of his units so that my main advance has an easier time. Um, and yeah, this um, that's that's pretty much all that I have to say. Again, you can see here certain types of positioning, right, with the two squares. Just making sure that you're not too vulnerable. Making sure that you have some chaff in the back that's not easily missiled or taken care of, um, so that you have enough stuff to distract your opponent with. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's all I have for now for aggro. So let's move on to a game where I am defending. So. Here's a game where I am defending, um, and you can actually see here that I'm not positioning my uh, sledges verti or vertically. 
Um, this is because I wasn't entirely sure whether my opponent would play aggro, and I generally, generally prefer having my sledges horizontal if my opponent were to play standard. Um, and I think I have a pretty like strong opener against him anyway, regardless of what he was going to buy here. You can see that I put the crawlers here horizontal, uh, horizontal behind the towers, just to always prevent the possibility of getting everything pulled away by a sneaky flank. And yeah, you can see also the positioning, right, uh, of the slower units that have a little less range, slightly in front of the tower, and then the marksman is slightly behind, has more range, um, and can, can stay safe. Now, my opponent has got some positional issues here, where he's starting out with steel balls and fangs. These two don't go together amazingly well, but you can play it. The problem here is that he's actually relatively close there's only one space in between each fang and the steel balls and because the steel balls are so much faster it can be really easy for me here to start funneling all of these towards one spot and even put down a missile uh, a little bit further back because these steel balls will be the first thing to to engage so here we have the round four of this particular game and you can see how it evolved my opponents in fact tries to go for um for carry fangs and immediately you can see here the, the funneling mechanic, right? I'm trying to put these fangs in front to slow him down. I keep my sledges as HP on the board again to slow him down, also to aid with the chaff clear. Um, and I have myself a Vulcan uh, in front of the tower uh, behind the funnel to try and deal with all of these small units. Uh, we can go forward even further as we see the board develop into a fortress fang comp from my opponent. And um, I have now picked myself up some uh, melters. And again, you can see, right, uh, the positioning. Melters, kind of the same role as a, a marksman, have decent range. Go behind the stuff that's supposed to die first, the big tanks, uh, the chaff clear. And also kind of trying to position them in a way where they can deal with the opponent's threats. So here you can see the Melter is in front. Here it's a bit annoying because I have this Marksman, but I didn't really want to sell him um, because he was such high level. But ideally this Melter would be more on the inside up against these Crawlers to try and deal with this Fortress. And here you can see Melter also in front of this Fortress to try and kill it. Um, furthermore, you can see different chaff waves again, right? I have these fangs in front to funnel. I have some late fangs here to protect from potential outside shenanigans. I have crawlers behind the tower. I have crawlers all the way in the back. Um, and I even have crawlers in front of this particular scenario because he was playing fangs all the way up against the line. Um, again, this is using... All of these concepts, right, of having the different chaff waves, using these pooling, these funneling mechanics, um, and placing units adequately so that they can fulfill their role, understanding what are their strengths, are they fast, are they slow, do they have hit points, can they tank, can they not tank, do they have range, yes or no, um, and, and where do you want to put them. Um, we can maybe even go further ahead. No, we can't, never mind. This was actually the last round that we played as I did manage to take the win. Um, but yeah, hopefully these, this kind of, um, gives you an idea of how to defend against this type of push. We'll actually pull up a different one where my opponent is utilizing, um, an asymmetrical push or uh, no, a symmetrical, sorry, a push on the outsides of the board. So here we have a game, uh, where my opponent is pushing on the outside, um, <laughs> this player, by the way, is uh, Sarah, who uh, I have taken some notes from. And uh, you can see it's a very similar setup to what I was running in the first game I was highlighting. But now I'm finding myself on the receiving end of it. Um, and here you can see me myself using the funnel mechanics a lot, right? I did start out with those sledges. And I have these fangs in front because I saw that my opponent started out with, with sledges. Uh, sorry, not sledges, steel balls and crawlers. So trying to funnel them towards this pillar of power, as you might say. Um, and yeah, trying to pull, you can see all of these are being pulled towards the inside and just trying to set myself up for success and hopefully be able to, to get something big in this game to be able to deal 
with these opponents units now obviously i have to be afraid in the or afraid more i have to be cognizant of the fact that my opponent will likely start pushing from the inside here and also from the outside and so here we move ahead a little and you can see that i have indeed positioned quite a bit on the outside um, my opponent has got a mobile beacon already and i have positioned my my units to try and deal with that threat also have some fangs now on the outside um and just trying to to deal with this threat but now the the threat in the middle comes along and i have to deal with that and so you can see how the board develops i am trying now to also deal with whatever is coming to me in the middle deciding to purchase myself a melter um and again like the positioning is rather similar right uh with the chaff in front the tanky unit somewhat in front and then we have some chaff clear and then we finally have the single target dps um that's supposed to kill the big units on my opponent's board we can move ahead even further but you can see how this board ends up developing along the way um i end up picking up more chaff clear here um realizing that this unit doesn't have the most range and it's relatively fast so actually deciding to put it slightly more backwards um also waiting right for my opponent's chaff to basically run in as a lot of his chaff is in the front lines uh rather than putting this all the way in the front where it's vulnerable and yeah trying to to make good use here of the way that the the round will develop and then as you move along the the setup just kind of becomes self-explanatory right i just keep building on the same key concepts i have some different chaff waves um i have these different funnels and also just chaff to protect and slow down my key units and yeah i mean that's that's pretty much all that that i can say nothing nothing too spectacular here you just keep building on top of that once that your your setup is complete but i hope that this kind of helps you um understand how you have to try and and defend right at least what you're trying to achieve if you understand what you're trying to achieve then it becomes easier to try out different stuff um if it then doesn't work you can try out something new or if you lose a game, it might be a bit easier to identify what went wrong, right? Was it your positioning? Uh, did your opponent get to the tower too fast? Um, were some of your carry units in the wrong spot and getting picked off too quick? That kind of thing, right? Or were you not funneling opponent's units well enough to where they were just splitting around all over the place and it just made it really hard for your chaff clear to deal with it? Those are important concepts and important things that you need to think about if you're trying to analyze a game um, and want to understand why you lost and perhaps improve on, on your gameplay. And finally, we're going to pull up a standard game. So here we are. Uh, this is the standard game, both of us playing around our towers further back, right? No aggressiveness at all. And you can see here the positioning that I like to play usually. I started out with fangs. I position him two squares away from the tower because I will likely want to grab myself some crawlers over there at some point. And then I decide to put one pack of fang on the outside. Um, basically to, to just have a, a bit of an... Well, not have everything in the same line of fire if my opponent does decide to pick up storm crawlers, which is something that will happen rather much in in standard games um, and then again similar type of positioning with the tanky units and chaff clear being around the same line here right in front of the tower and as we move on in this game you'll actually see me doing the same thing right so my single target dps my snipers are slightly behind I have put the crawlers behind the towers. Um, late chaff has also been picked up. So wasps also can be definitely used as chaff and often will be. And putting those far in the back because they are quick units, 60 meters a second, right? Same as the crawlers. Um, and just trying to make sure that they arrive at the correct timing um, so that they can distract the opponent's snipers and also their decent damage dealers so I don't want them to be all the way in the front. I don't want them to be the first thing to die. 
Opponent here, by the way, is actually uh, buys storm callers later on and positions them right in front of the fangs. So this is something that I can try and and abuse at some point with distraction uh, crawlers. But you can see that he positions um, correctly here. And in fact, I think that vertical storms here are are better against uh, vertical fangs. This makes it a bit easier for them to deal with it. We can move on even further. And so you see me just building onto my line of, of chaff, of chaff clear, right? I go for a relatively simple composition here with some arc lights for my chaff clear, a bunch of crawlers for the distraction, and then my marksman for the single target DPS. You can also see about the same thing for my opponent, right? Um, has the different chaff units. This is a different setup that you could use. I think this also doesn't get fully pulled, so you could try this out too. Um, Playing with his tanky units here in front, um, the marksmen are actually relatively far forward, but um, that's a, a, a somewhat like standard setup. He actually decides to play a wraith here, which is a little bit further back, considering that this unit is faster than most other units. And then he has the the wasps all the way in the back to try and distract my marksmen. And eventually, this is pretty much the end game board state that we end up in, where I have my own wasps in the back as well, right? They're fast units. I now try and actually make them carry rather than having them be just chaff. And I don't want them to immediately die to these AA, uh, to these anti air fortresses. And so they're all the way in the back. Nothing really changed over here, and my opponent actually tries to match by making sure that the fortresses are not the first thing to get locked onto, as he's relying on them to deal with my wasps. So he puts them in the back as well, um, so that they arrive at a good timing and don't end up dying to my marksmen before they get their anti-missile barrages off. So... This finally brings us to the end of the video. I hope I've been able to convey some of the key concepts that will allow you to improve your positioning in Mechabellum and understand why you put units where you put them. Um, as a quick summary, I think what is important to understand is the concept of function and role. So how fast are your units? What do you want them to do? And where do you position them, position them uh, for them to be able to do that job, right? So generally speaking, Chaff, you will want that to um, get targeted first. You will want your mid-range units that are a bit slower, your chaff clear, your tanks to be in front of the towers, or at least protect the units that are carrying, and the damage dealers um, that have more range that you will want them to be slightly behind. Um, the concept of chaff waves is important, right? To refresh chaff during the round rather than having everything on the same line and quickly die. Um, funneling and pulling, so trying to pull enemy units, trying to distract enemy units, but also trying to prevent your setup from being very vulnerable and susceptible to being distracted, to being pulled away, um, that kind of thing. Um, and then finally, I guess, is also trying to make sure that your units are positioned where they can actually do their job. So if you want a melter to kill the fortress, put the melter in front of the fortress, right? Um... And then finally, I guess if you're playing aggro, I mean, then it's a bunch of different things that you have to take into account. Also, when defending, um, and especially being wary of the possibilities of using a mobile beacon. If you feel like you've missed anything, feel free to comment down below. Uh, I would highly recommend you to either check me out when I'm streaming live on Twitch, or other streamers if you see them, and ask them questions, look at their gameplay um, to try and learn. If something, if, if well, you want to improve your positioning, see what they do, try and copy that into your games, um, pick what you like, throw away what you dislike. If something is working for you and I didn't mention it, again, that's completely fine. If it's, if you're managing to have success with it, then, you know, don't change your winning recipe. And without further ado, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.